Hello and welcome. It is eight something. It is the 26th day of April 2021. Sponsor me. Support me. Somebody, I need a sponsor and I will sell out. Our current sponsor, Primetime Sports Camp. It is your grumpy guide to all things gaming. It is morning. It is Monday. The sun is sort of out. Uh, yes, still using the old camera because laptops. Let's see what's going on in the world of gaming newsy stuff today. And um, for some reason, the, this awfully cheerful engine Kickstarter is really getting pushed. Um, I'm seeing blurbs and ads and articles on it really a lot. Uh, it, so it's it's a it's a you know a, a, an engine, but it's sort of a tongue-in-cheek comedy over the top. Uh, game system, think Ghostbusters style of, you know, there's action, but there's also comedy, but there's also, and I, I guess it's supposed to be sort of a multi-genre game. I don't know. Uh, Steve Perrin had something to do with it. Sa Sandy Peterson had something to do with it. It's a uh, fast RPG action comedy, and it is really getting a lot of uh, good press considering it's still being kickstarted and so if that's something that sounds interesting to you, it's called the Awfully Cheerful Engine. Its Kickstarter will be ending at the end of May. It's um, Sandy Peterson has got something to do with it. And it's supposed to be, I don't know, goofy, fun, silly, easy, sort of GURPS, but more fun. I, I don't know. But it's certainly getting a lot of news, press, blurbs, ads, whatever. Moving on. Uh, Wizards of the Coast posted their blog entry giving insights into the nuts and bolts of the D&D studio as it was. So we already went over this earlier this week with their little blurb about why they released um, a news blurb where there was actually no news other than the fact that, hey, we're making stuff. No, what is that stuff you're making? We're not going to tell you. Um, so we know that this summer uh, is probably going to be Ravenloft themed for the big uh, three-day um, Gen Con gamey thing, much, much like, uh, why do I do this? Um, you know, Stream of Eyes and stuff. So I'm guessing that'll probably be Ravenloft. Um, there's a couple other things we're expecting between this year and next year with Con Scene coming up. Of course, since Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro just reorganized their entire structure, who knows if any of this will remain pertinent to the future of the company because I expect there will be a lot of changes. All right. Oh, we, there is a free PDF of Wicked Ones. Uh, we mentioned this, of course. It's uh, based upon the Forge in the Dark system. It's a role-playing game where you take on monsters and you go after the heroes. So, you know, evil overlord, dungeon lord kind of thing. Uh, monster player characters fighting eat those pesky heroes. The, the PDF is available for free on drive-thru. Check it out. Um, there we go. Some news on Gen Con. Uh, the April health, health and safety updates for changes affecting the convention with its new dates in the end of mid-September. So right now, tentatively, Gen Con will be 16th, September 16th to September 19th. It'll be half digital, half Face to face, uh, so they're right now they're calling it the Gen Con pop up. So I guess smaller, uh, there will be smaller games. You know, there won't be like a twenty four hour open gaming section. Obviously, mask and the six foot thing, and people are probably going to have to get barcoded when they go in. Uh, there will also be pop ups happening at local game stores. Participating publishers announced that there will be, I guess, sort of like. Uh, a free RPG day where you can spend to get a badge to go into a game store and it'll have a lot of the same stuff that um, you can get at game um, Gen Con. So that sounds interesting. Um, if you have a friendly local game store, uh, that's for Seth's Games Anime here in Ventura, walk in there and see if they're doing this and if they're not doing it, suggest maybe they should. This deadline for submissions is May 8th. Uh, hey, uh, Lone Wolf is back. Crucible 7 has announced new books on the way from John for uh, the uh, Lone Wolf series and extending the Lone Wolf license. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the Lone Wolf license, Lone Wolf was one of those pick-your-own-adventure book series, and then they made a role-playing game out of it, and it was a very good 
role playing game received lots and lots of press. Good press, a sort of half role playing game, half board game. You could play it yourself um, because it was pick your own adventure kind of thing. So it could be solo play, group play, and then it just sort of languished. But now they're adding new stuff to it. Uh, yeah, it was a really good box set. It had a lot of good stuff in it. So yeah, uh, new updates for Baldur's Gate. Uh, Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 has some new updates on it. So if you own Baldur's Gate or Baldur's Gate 2, there has been some new DLC added to the Enhanced Edition that you can get over on Steam. They bring they brought up the graphics, stuff like that. So if you're a Baldur's Gate fan and you've been playing the older games because you knew, you know, they're great and you want to maybe play through them again, check it out because they've uh, added a whole bunch of new stuff. Big fix some bugs, added some DLC, fixed some patches balance some stuff and definitely upgraded the graphics fantasy flag Glade, fantasy flight games has released two new books for the legend of the five rings role-playing game we talked about this last week and we talked about when i t met the designer and he said you know legends of the five rings is definitely has a beginning middle admitting and middle and end and how he wanted it to be different than other role-playing slash ccgs but that is of course changed because he doesn't own it anymore a completely different company owns it and they want to continue supporting the line for as long as they can uh there's obviously a market despite all the you know asian appropriation cultural appropriation role-playing games like this are racist unless they're written produced edited, drawn, and everything else by people who are actually from Asia. Um, good luck to anybody who actually can find a living ninja from the um, samurai period or a living samurai from the samurai period or, you know, any peasant or whatever, anybody who actually lived back then. We're talking, you know, what, the 1600s, uh, 1500s. So if you can actually find a samurai to consult to see what life was actually like during when the Legends of the Five Rings is supposedly set to be your um, cultural uh, whatever. Good luck with that. I would, you know, I guess maybe you have time travel. I don't know. Anyways, yes. So they are continuing. Yes, that's me being facetious and sarcastic and waffling. They're continuing the license uh, past whatever the original designer had planned. I don't know if he even has anything to do with it anymore. He could have gone on to other things, whatever. It's nice to see Legends of the Five Rings still out there. And finally, Humble Bumble! Yay! The company whose name I will never get right. Uh, they have a Vegas Pro Bundle featuring a bunch of stuff to help you with video production. So that's nice. This is a 30-level Humble Bumble. And this bumble goes for... Uh, Stop the Hate, um, you know, um, a charity dedicated to preventing racism and stuff like that. So it's a $30 bundle to get a whole bunch of uh, video editing stuff. They also have the uh, comic book and graphic novel collection from D&D. &D. So that's um, a whole bunch of the stuff that were made into D&D &D comics like uh, the Drizzt, the, um, the Minsk, the Baldur's Gates. Stuff like that. The Legends of the Fi Legends of Huma, Dragonlance. Uh, Twenty-five dollars will get you thirty-two graphic novels. That bundle uh, supports the Hasbro's Children's Fund, and then there's the another Black Library uh, collection novels from Warhammer 40k Universe. Twenty-six novels, uh, and that supports the Every Library Institute. That's a charity that. Uh, wants you know to keep libraries open and get new books into libraries and stuff like that that is um the main titles main news going on um not much else going on this week uh, i guess the big news is uh game x gen con we're definitely gonna consult our local friendly local game store to see if they're doing it that's Sess games and anime here in ventura um so yeah other than that not much which is a surprise considering we are going into convention season you would sort of expect a lot more big ticket big news i i assume wizards of the coast is kind of just you know sitting on ravenloft and holding off until the actual convention and then they're just going to explode with all sorts of new information and stuff about what we could expect from the ravenloft future and what we can expect post summer con season going into you know christmas season come september i know it's it's april and we're thinking about september but that's how uh production companies 
think. They don't, they don't think monthly, they think quarters. So right now we're going into the summer quarter, summer conventions, but then they also have to think into the you know fall, winter quarter and the fall, winter productions and what they can get out before the fiscal year ends in December. So it's not unusual for me to think, you know, theory craft what we might see come September when we're just going into the beginning of con season here at the end of April, beginning of May. So yeah, that's what I think is going on with Wizards. But as for the other companies, it's sort of a surprise that we're not seeing a lot of, hey, here's what's coming news. Um, of course, COVID has affected how everything works. So I'm assuming that's 50% of the reason. And because of COVID, finances, production is all changed the way the companies do things. So I assume that's another 30% of why we're not seeing a lot of big t ticket items in the news yet. Uh, the, 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 the remaining 20%, I, I, it's sort of a mystery. I don't know really why. Uh, again, I, I just, you know, it's got to have something to do with just how production has changed in the past year and you know a year two years ago we would be seeing the big ticket items getting advertised from all the major players and some of the minor players who want to take advantage of the beginnings of the con season but con season has changed production has changed everything like that has changed so who knows other than ravenloft we really have no idea what we're gonna see coming this spring summer con season uh from peso free league Fantasy Flight, War, you know, Warhammer, Onyxy, some of the smaller publishings. No idea what the you know we're going to expect for the Any Awards this year or whatever. It's a mystery. It's a crapshoot. It's a perplexing puzzle. It can either be really, really exciting with lots of good things coming out or kind of boring because we're coasting out of post-COVID and who knows what to expect over the next year, five years, ten years. Anyway, that's enough waffling. I'm your grumpy guy to all things gaming. If you appreciate this content... Like, share, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Remember, contest, free shit, 500 subs. We're going to do something crazy. It's Monday. I got to go buy stamps because I keep forgetting to get them. Hopefully the weather will clear up. Until next time, I will talk to you losers later. Now get off my lawn. Waffle, 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 waffle.